Happening now, two new COVID-related deaths were reported over the weekend in Cattaraugus County. Details coming up. Plus, Congress has struck a deal on the next COVID-19 relief. Well, things are quiet out there early this afternoon, but that will be changing for the later afternoon. Plus, we're keeping our eyes on a big storm, possibly for Christmas. We'll tell you about what we know next. The News at Noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now as we start off a new week. I'm Justin Gould. Two new COVID-19 deaths and 43 new cases of the virus were reported in Cattaraugus County over the weekend. The County Health Department says the deaths involve a 90-year-old man and a 73-year-old woman, both of whom developed respiratory failure. In total, 38 people have died from COVID in Cattaraugus County. 11 of the deaths occurred just this month. Additionally, 22 new cases of the virus were reported on Saturday and 18 on Sunday, bringing the county total number of cases to 106, 117. The seven-day average infection rate is 6.8% with 35 people hospitalized. Chautauqua County is expected to release their update later this afternoon. Well, a new COVID-19 vaccine, this one from Moderna, is scheduled to start distribution here in the U.S. But it will be the months before most people get vaccinated. As John Lawrence reports, in the meantime, the pandemic is still raging across much of the country. COVID-19 infections, hospitalizations, and deaths in the U.S. keep climbing. It will get worse because we still are experiencing uh, the outcome of the Thanksgiving um, holidays. According to data from Johns Hopkins University, the number of known cases in the U.S. doubles about every two months, and health officials say expected holiday travel this week will likely feed the surge. Exactly what the numbers may be, I don't know, but unfortunately, they're going to be higher than what they are today. To combat the ongoing threat, the U.S. has a new weapon to fight the deadly virus, a vaccine from Moderna. A Centers for Disease Control and Prevention panel voted to prioritize the shots for some, including residents in long-term care facilities and health care personnel. Obviously, we all wish we had all the vaccine in the world that we could get everybody vaccinated immediately. But I think this tiering saves lives, probably does the best on reducing transmission. There's also a new variant of COVID-19 detected in the United Kingdom, causing some countries to suspend travel from the UK. It doesn't make you more seriously ill, but it does spread more readily. And the vaccine should continue to be effective against it. I'm John Lawrence reporting. John, thank you. President-elect Joe Biden is scheduled to get a COVID-19 vaccine sometime today. Congressman Tom Reed has been vaccinated against novel coronavirus. The Republican representative for New York's 23rd Congressional District announced in a tweet that he took the first dose of Pfizer's vaccine on Saturday. He says the vaccine is safe, effective, and painless. And the pandemic has reminded him that the nation is filled with great Americans like healthcare heroes and medical innovators. The vaccine is administered in two doses, with the second given 29 days after the first. The Office of the Attending Physician says that members of the House of Representatives and Senate are eligible for a COVID vaccine. In addition to Reed, Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer received the vaccine this weekend as well. Last week, a New York State hospital was the first in the nation to administer the shot. Well, an annual food drive benefiting one of Jamestown's largest soup kitchens took place over the weekend. Event organizer Keith Martin says, aside from new safety precautions, the 7th Annual Community Holiday Hall featuring the St. Susan Center experienced an increase in traffic even amid this pandemic. The COVID situation really hasn't affected the people coming out, which has been great. We're, we're masked up and we're, you know, we're, we're being COVID safe, but uh, uh, all in all, I think the weather has, has uh, been nicer this year. So more and more people have come by to drop off donations for St. Susan. Now parked outside of the Jamestown Cycle Shop in Brooklyn Square Thursday through Saturday, Martin's crew collected everything from non-perishable food items to drinks to turkeys and hams, along with monetary donations going to the center. 
Now, even though this year's drive is complete, he says anyone thinking of donating still should. Those interested can visit stsusancenter.org. Be sure to click on the donation tab. Throughout the pandemic, the senator, senator Center has provided bagged lunches for those in need. Certainly, it's great to see the community giving back amid this holiday season and really throughout the last nine months or so as we've been making our way through uh, all of uh, everything that has changed with COVID. And, and we appreciate you for sticking with us for the one thing that hasn't changed, and that's us always putting the facts first in our coverage of the local community. We appreciate you tuning in here on this Monday. Great to see Brad. Good to see Lisa. Good to see Marty, Kelly, Ben, Diane, Jim, Cheryl, Kirk, and Joseph as well. Good afternoon, David, Topsy, and Megan. Let us know what all of you are doing down in the comments down below. Well, now let's go to Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter, who's standing by with a first look at our weather. Happy Monday to you, Dakota. And I know things are going to be getting pretty interesting weather-wise in the next couple of days. Oh, yes, they will. Happy Monday, everybody. So close to Christmas. We just got about four more days, and then we are officially there. This is a live look coming from Finley Lake uh, here in uh, Chautauqua County. You can see the snow on the ground, 35 degrees right now in Finley Lake. And as of we stand right now, it's actually not bad out there. We've had just a few of those clouds moving across the southern tier, but so far, no precipitation. That will likely change as we go through the later part of the afternoon. We could see a few rain and snow showers, but... You know, it's that sign of the times if you want to get out there before Christmas. Peak and peak open at 6 to 24 inches with a packed powder surface. Holiday Valley 8 to 30 inches with a machine goom surface. Hollymont has opened on Saturday as well. 24 inch average there with a machine goom surface. So the ski resorts are looking good. And I'm telling you, the ski resorts are really going to like what's coming up potentially on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, going all the way through the weekend. Yeah, it's going to be some of that white stuff, but we'll tell you about it later. 33 was the high yesterday. 31 is where we started the day uh, this morning. 59 and 8 below zero are the record highs and lows at the airport. So through the afternoon, a good amount of clouds, a few scattered rain and snow showers, definitely possible through the afternoon. The wind manageable, so the wind chill, not too bad. 33 on the highest hills, 42 at the Lake Erie shoreline. Southwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. What do we know about that Christmas Day storm? We'll tell you in detail what we know right now in a few minutes. Justin, back to you. Certainly all eyes on that, Dakota. Thank you. Well, after weeks of intense negotiation, Congress and the White House now have reached an agreement on an emergency federal relief package. But as reporter Britt Conway explains, there's still more to be done before any of that money ends up in the hands of Americans. More help is on the way. This bill is a good bill. Sunday night, lawmakers from both chambers finally agreed on a COVID-19 rescue package to the tune of $900 billion. What I'm excited about in this bill, and is really the democratic difference, is what it does for America's working families. It is packed with targeted policies that help struggling Americans who've already waited entirely too long. The details of the plan haven't been released, but it is expected to include money for schools, small businesses, unemployment benefits, and direct payments to households. And a portion will pay for distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. But there's still work to be done here. Now we need to promptly finalize text, avoid any last minute obstacles, and cooperate to move this legislation through both chambers. Certainly no small task. The announcement comes after months of policy disputes and partisan finger pointing. We've heard Democrats say openly they were not willing to deal all summer and fall. What took so long is because we could not get our Republican colleagues to crush the virus. A number of procedural steps still need to take place to clear the way for a vote in both chambers. President Donald Trump said he'll sign the coronavirus relief package once it reaches his desk. But Democrats say this bill is just the first step. It is not the end of the story. It is not the end of the job. Anyone who thinks this bill is enough does not know what's going on in America. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Britt, thank you. The House passed a one-day spending stopgap after the relief deal was announced, averting a government shutdown at midnight. Well, today they'll vote on the final COVID-19 relief package along with the $1.4 trillion spending bill for a new fiscal gear. 
Well, New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo has signed an executive order providing additional support for two groups strongly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, vulnerable homeowners and the restaurant industry. Cuomo says under the order, local governments can continue to provide property tax exemptions for low-income senior citizens and persons with disability who own property through 2021 by lifting an in-person renewal requirement. Additionally, the sales tax deadline for restaurants in orange zones, which have been required to suspend indoor dining, will be extended until March. Under the order, local governments can automatically renew 2021 benefits for all property owners who receive benefits this year unless the locality has a reason to believe an individual has changed their primary address, added another owner to the deed, or transferred the property to an owner or passed away entirely. Now, in addition to the flexibility provides these benefits under the executive order, it provides a three-month extension to the deadline for residents in orange zones, including New York City, to turn over sales taxes to the state. Well, straight ahead, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter is back with a look at what we can expect to see come Christmas. And it might be a bit snowy. But first, the city of Jamestown resident is facing charges after police say they busted them with an alleged stolen vehicle over the weekend. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. Happy Holidays from WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Wishing you a safe and happy holiday season. WNY News Now, the Jolly Team, where coverage comes first. And welcome back to WNY News Now. A city of Jamestown resident is facing charges after police say they busted them with an alleged stolen vehicle over the weekend. New York State Police says 34-year-old Shannon DeJesus was pulled over for an alleged traffic violation in Kennedy on Saturday. Police say the license plate on the vehicle DeJesus was driving came back to a different vehicle stolen out of Florida, which was subsequently located at their residence. Furthermore, troopers say DeJesus' license was previously suspended at the time. DeJesus is charged with fourth-degree criminal possession of stolen property and second-degree aggravated unlicensed operation. The suspect was issued an appearance ticket and is scheduled to appear in town of Poland court at a later date. Well, navigating the holidays can be difficult, especially for many students across the country who are now on holiday break. It can certainly be fun and exciting, but it can also be a little stressful, especially during the pandemic. In today's Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither with six ways to help you help your kids navigate the holiday. Whether it's juggling childcare or 
family coming to town. The holiday break can be fun or feel overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. First, maintain simple routines. That might mean just going to sleep around the same time every day, generally waking up around the same time too. And just by doing that, it lets our kids and ourselves know what to expect, which can really create a sense of comfort and security. Licensed therapist Jody Baumstein with Children's Healthcare of Atlanta's Strong for Life says next, practice healthy habits, eat well, get good sleep, limit screen time, and stay active. Third, it's okay to say no. There's only so much time in the day. And if we say yes to everything, we're just going to feel overloaded and probably burned out within a couple of days, if not hours. Fourth, just breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. It can help you cope with stress and unwind. Fifth, get creative. Maybe start a new tradition. Instead of thinking about all the things we can't do, we can really use it as an opportunity with our family to embrace change and think about what we can do instead. Finally, stay connected to family and friends you can't see because of the pandemic. Instead of just having a regular phone call, consider turning it into a FaceTime or a Zoom. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Mandy, thank you. Now the therapist says you'll need to plan for going back to school too. Be sure to acknowledge your child's feeling about the break ending and make a plan to spend some quality time together so you'll both have something to look forward to and so things go smoothly on the first morning back. Get outfits, lunches, and backpacks ready. Well, speaking of school, a Jamestown High School student is giving back to the community. High school freshman Alquella Baker, who's currently attending school remotely, donated hundreds of items to the new center that she collected from around town. Becker says that she knows that domestic violence is a rising concern, adding that her mom is studying the field now. She explains that those were the reasons why she wanted to give back to the new center. That center provides free confidential services to survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault, including a 13-bed shelter and a 24-hour crisis hotline, case management, prevention education, children and family outreach, as well as general advocacy. The center's shelter manager says the year has been challenging for her group, and they truly appreciate the donations. Well, today is Crossword Puzzle Day, so get your thinking on. According to National Day Calendar, English journalist Arthur Wayne appeared to have invented the game. The first one appeared in New York's World newspaper on December 21st, 1913. Well, now millions of people around the world enjoy crossword puzzles, perhaps especially on the day that honors them. Certainly, it seems like with the lack of uh, newspapers out there now, and I think a lot of people aren't subscribing to them anymore, almost you kind of lose that. But you still see, you know, around my house, for example, we have books of crossword puzzles, say, in the bathroom or wherever, and, you know, you'd have someone who would fill them out and uh, around the house in general. So it's certainly great to, great to honor that day. And Dakota, I was playing a really fun game over the weekend, speaking of, of wordsmithing called Taboo. Have you ever heard of this? No. So basically you have, you break up into teams. Um, in this case, we were uh, teams of three um, under the 10 person COVID limit. Mm -hmm. So we, we gathered around a table and we would have uh, one person who had a card and on the card it said the word that you had to guess, uh, get your teammates to guess what it was. Oh, then, so it was like password. Yes, very much so. And okay. underneath were taboo words which you could not use in your description. I loved it. I think it's because I work with words all day, right? Mm -hmm. And writing and synonyms. But it was so fun. I really could tell the story without using those words. And you'd have a, another person from the other team who kind so, of looked over your shoulder to make sure you didn't cheat. But okay, so cool. is it sort of like password where you can only give one word clues? No, you can just speak whatever. So like I actually told the story. Like for example, there was one, a jury. So I said a group of individuals who gathered in the legal system to give a judgment onto something because I couldn't say court, I couldn't say verdict, and I, I, I believe I, I couldn't even um, say like uh, 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 peers and things like that. Okay, like so it's sort of like password in the way that you can't use a form of the word. Right, you can't use a, a synonym of as, right, exactly. Okay. 
So we should actually get that. You know, yes. if we have a, not that we have a slow news day, but it'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I think we should play it. I, I'm I really a game show it. nut, so it's like you know, for me that sounds almost exactly like password. Yeah. Minus the fact that with password, it's one, one word, word clues. Yeah, you could you could so. speak, uh, you know, in sentences. You could okay. give one word. Um, you couldn't use your hands though, and. Mm. I think you yeah. and I both are the same. So, I like to talk with my yeah. hands. So I, I put them under I'm the Italian, table and they so kept banging I, up. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> they would be like, no, put your hands down. Because mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, one word. And they're yep. like, no, physical don't clues, do that. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. no same physical. Same way in password. Yep. So. Audible clues only. No physicals. But it was a lot of fun. It, it really mm -hmm. was. So hopefully all of you had some fun over the weekend or getting ready to have some coming this week. Good to see Jennifer, Emily, Kimberly, and John. Let us know what you're doing down in the comments below. We love uh, connecting with you and appreciate you uh, tuning in every day. Uh, Dakota, I'm not going to take up any more of your time because I know you have a pretty busy weather weekend. We were talking about this morning almost sort of the duty of a weather forecaster, mm -hmm. right? We've seen numbers out there where people are starting to forecast, you know, we could get a foot of snow on Christmas. But at this point, it's still kind of up in the air where, and I'll let you explain a little more, you don't quite know everything yet about what's coming later this week. Mm -hmm. There's a simple rule I learned early on. It was tell them what you know and don't tell them what you don't. Speaking of what I know, let's take a look at the temperatures and whatnot through fall. We are officially into winter. The solstice passed this morning, so happy winter to all of you out there. So uh, the fall season actually runs September through November in the meteorological world, that's when we start taking the records. So the average temperature throughout the month of fall was 51.2 degrees. We had 9.22 inches of rainfall. We only had two and a half inches of snowfall throughout the fall. The hottest day we had was 82 degrees back on the 9th of September. And the coldest day we had was 31 back on the 18th of October. As of right now, we're at 34 degrees right now, south wind of nine and the wind chill not too bad in the upper 20s. It's gonna be manageable today. That's the good news, but it will still be feeling a little bit chilly. This is the system that's going to be brushing us over the next 24 hours. This is where our snow is going to be coming from tonight. After this moves out, our attention turns to a bigger storm system that's actually still way out in the upper Midwest that's actually going to be coming our way for Christmas. Let's take you through future scan here. Again, it just shows you the idea of maybe a couple spotty rain or snow showers through the afternoon. No big deal there. Notice the snow st uh, start to pick up an intensity storm system pulling like this to our north and west. So we're ultimately going to see a few snow showers through the night. Any, uh, any overall accumulation is going to be minor, about one inch across the lower elevations, if that, maybe upwards of two to three inches, maybe on some of the hills. That'll do it. Not a big deal, but it'll freshen up some of the snow packs and especially for the ski resorts uh, who are uh, looking to open the ones that are not open yet. And then after that, tomorrow turns mainly dry, especially in the afternoon. All right, let's tell you what we know about Christmas because this is a whole big deal here and uh, we're still kind of out in la la land with this. So here's what we're going with Christmas Eve. The storm system will likely be on the warmer side of the storm initially. So that ultimately means a soaking rainfall likely on uh, Thursday here. Very mild, likely uh, mid 40s there, but notice the low temperature at 14. This is because a strong cold front is, is going to come through, especially on Thursday night. That's going to knock our, our high temperatures down and we could see widespread snow Christmas Day with lake effect snow showers setting up uh, throughout the later part of the day and that will continue through the day on Saturday. Look at the high on Christmas Day, 16. And just to show you the, the records here, the warmest Christmas Day was 63 back in 1932. We could tie this, the coldest Christmas ever was in 1992 where it was 16 degrees. If we hit 16, we'll tie it. If we fall short, we'll have the all time coldest Christmas Day ever on record dating back to 1890. And uh, the snowiest, we had 5.3 inches of snow picked up in 1944. Could both the snow record and the coldest winter ever happen this year? We'll find out. Next seven days of your life coming up right now, brought to you by 42 degrees and sunny, 34 tomorrow. Again, afternoon, again, uh, mainly snow showers in the morning, no big deal afternoon, like me coming better there. 42 on Wednesday, it also becomes windy. Watch Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All three of those days are gonna be a part of that storm system. All three days could change. So stay right here for updates. And even on the second half of the weekend, we're going 28 degrees with only a few uh, lake effect snow showers in the forecast. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
Horse Defense Weather is sponsored by 42 Degrees and Sunny, smoking deals on smoking accessories. Learn more at 42DegreesAndSunny.com. That's 42DegreesAndSunny.com. Wishing you a safe and happy holiday season. WNY News Now, the Jolly Team, where coverage comes first. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today, email our news desk, or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. Slow down. Slow down and move over. Move over. When you see signs, lights, vests, please give us some room. Slow down. Slow down and move over. When you need help, it's our job to help you. To save you. Despite the danger. This danger. This danger is real. Do your part. Please. Slow down. Slow down. And move over. Move over. Happy Holidays from WNY News Now. Well, a hard rock guitar legend is playing a different tune these days. Rick Damagella talked with former Deep Blue Purple guitarist Richie Blackmore about his Renaissance-themed Christmas music. Here we come a caroling among the leaves so green. Here we come a wandering so fat to be seen. Blackmore's Night is the medieval and renaissance music group of guitarist Richie Blackmore and his wife, Candace Knight. And God send you a happy new year. We play castles, historical venues. We play a little bit of everything, so it's kind of family-based music. Um, we do renaissance, rock, folk music, uh, tavern music, instrumentals, you name it, we've got something for everybody. We Come a Caroling marks their latest foray into ancient arrangements of Christmas music. We did A Little Town of Bethlehem, too. It's the uh, European English version that Richie actually used to go around singing when he was a wee lad and he was a caroler and went from door to door um, collecting shillings. Yes, shillings back in those days. We're going back um, a couple of hundred years now. And <laughs> I used to go around carol singing. And I would sing um, A Little Town of Bethlehem, but it mm -hmm. has a totally different melody to the way that it's sung and played here in America. Decking the halls in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Rick, thank you. Here We Come a Caroling by Blackmore's Night is out now on CD digitally and as a limited edition release on vinyl as well. Pretty cool. That's uh, got quite a little bit of popularity there, Dakota, as more and more people start to head back to a record players. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's one of the things we talked about before. And in this case, it's almost literal, is that people are going back to those old holiday traditions. In this case, really far back. Right. Uh, but uh, nevertheless. Got a, those a 45, cool Jay? Yeah, right. <laughs> it, is your needle still good? <laughs> But uh, but no yeah it's uh, it's it's pretty cool and that they're that they're sort of paying homage to some of that folklore that I think we don't really see too much it reminds me almost of in Westfield every year not this year because of COVID but they have big Civil War conventions mm -hmm. this is obviously even farther back than the Civil War um, but uh, nevertheless it's almost like we can put our medieval hats on and uh, get our big sticks of Viking meat and <laughs> yes. enjoy. <laughs> We'll make, uh, what is it, um, ham and gudra huggets? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Rose. Oh, my gosh. So, so awesome. Well, hopefully everyone is having a great day. We thank so much for tuning in. That's it for us today. Of course, Dakota and I are back tomorrow with a look at more local news headlines that matter to you. In the meantime, we'll leave you with this live look over downtown Jamestown. News continues 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com and on our mobile app. Download it today in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store.